Like, okay, I gotta go home. I know. Okay. What will draw the least attention? So friends on the panel, when we get started, uh, Kylan, give us an intro, everyone introduce yourself to your theater, and then let's jump into the first questions. Save about, I'll give you a five at the end, we'll take some questions from the audience, or I'll let you know if there's any from online. Sound good? Yes. Woo! About 40 minutes, rocking and rolling, please make sure you speak into the mic, it'll be great. My name is Kylan Adams, and I want to thank you for tuning in to the Creative Careers panel on how to apply for an internship slash fellowship. I am the Education Fellow at Berkeley Repertory Theater, and I'm here with some of my peers at other theaters across the Bay Area. So we're just going to go down the line and introduce ourselves and our position, fellowship, internship position at our theaters. Hi, um, I'm Naila Harper Melvo, and I am a fellow at ACT, American Conservatory Theater. Um, my fellowship is the Community Producing Fellow, so I actually work between the Artistic and Education Departments um, at ACT. I'm Alessandra McLaughlin. Uh, I am the Artistic Direction Intern, at one of the Artistic Direction Interns at Marine Theater Company, so I work directly with the Artistic Director. Hi, uh, my name is Leilani Germanuda. I'm the Education Fellow at the American Conservatory Theater. Um, I'm Mara ishihara -Zinke. I'm the Props Fellow at Berkeley Rep. I'm Karina Fox. I'm the Artistic Direction Apprentice at Magic Theater. 
Great, so now that you've told us about your fellowship positions, um, before we get more into details about what that entails, I want you to tell me a little bit about your experience prior to applying for the fellowship, apprenticeship, internship. Great, um, so uh, let's see. Yeah, I had a lot of experience um, interning at theaters. Uh, I So after I graduated, um, which was about a year and a half ago. I was in New York for a year, and I was one of the artistic interns for Signature Theater. Um, I had previously done an internship at Studio Theater, um, an internship at uh, Creative Artist Agency, so I, I was just doing a lot of internships, <laughs> honestly. Um, and, uh, and so I was looking for something that was a little bit of a step above or something that was a longer period of time where I could really sink my teeth into an organization and then and also um, a position that uh, could really teach me a whole lot about what it's like to be in nonprofit theater. Um, and so that's sort of why I came to ACT and applied for the nine-month fellowship. Um, I also was like in New York for a year after a little bit like not knowing what I wanted to do. You know, I was in a city right after I was I graduated and um, I knew that I really loved and was passionate about theater, um, but I also like had to pay bills and so I took so many different jobs. I worked at a barber shop, I worked at like a customer experience associate um, at a startup, so it, it was, you know, I was just doing a whole lot of um, random stuff on top of my theater passions. Um, and I think that you know, led me to want to pursue something that was a little bit more stable for nine months. So I graduated college in May, and prior to that had been uh, focusing more on direction and being a director. And I was talking to my mentor, and he was he had been an artistic director, and he was like, I think, you know, I think you got the chops for it, kid. Um, so I started to focus in on that and looked for a bunch of internships. They're all out there, but I was really attracted to the Bay because there are a lot of theaters here. Um, and what brought me to MTC was the idea of specifically focus on artistic direction and being at a, a being in the North Bay and in a different area, so it's not directly in the city, but being able to have that sort of one-on-one -on -one relationship with uh, my boss is really great, and that was what kind of pulled me in. So yeah, prior to that, I was looking for something, something like that, and that was what brought me to MTC. Thanks, y'all. Um, what was I doing before? So I just graduated in June, um, and prior to being at ACT, I was working actually for the Chrissy Field Center um, where I was doing environmental education. It seems like a stretch, but um, mm -hmm. for, for, and I'll talk a little bit about this more. Um, my background is not in theater, and that'll tie into some of the other things we may be talking about later in the panel, um, but my background is actually in education and community organizing. And I, like I said, I'm the educational fellow over at ACT, and I'm always looking for opportunities to work with different types of youth and different learning modalities um, and figuring out how else I can learn about different demographics of youth specifically here in San Francisco. Um, so when I was over at UC Santa Cruz, I was a community studies major with an education minor, um, doing student organizing out there and volunteering with different school programs. Um, and my big thing is diversity, equity, and inclusion and cultural competence in any type of education that I'm doing. So I had met with someone that knew folks over at ACT and I was just looking for other opportunities to learn about San Francisco kids. I'm from this city, I wanna continue working here and eventually go into uh, public school administration. So I was like, okay, this is really cool. I love theater, I'm a patron of the theater and I did it as a kid and I think it would be really awesome to get to incorporate my background in social justice and community organizing and cultural competence into a theater curriculum because um, I do recognize that Theater, theater and other art forms are not something, or is not something that's always accessible to all types of kids. So I was just looking for other opportunities where I could get di different types of learning and different activities um, out to different types of youth and see what they would be interested in and see how different types of youth receive types of information, whether it's creative or whether it's scientific. Um, yeah, so that's what I was, that's what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I also 
graduated in June from a like theater conservatory pro program for scenic design. Uh, so I was doing nothing but scenic design and working in my school's prop shop. And when I graduated, or when I was like starting to be about to graduate, my boss at the prop shop encouraged me to apply to fellowships because I was sort of unsure if I wanted to do design stuff or if I wanted to work on the more technical side um, because I had also been working summers as a carpenter at summer stock theaters and I liked both. Um, yeah, I just graduated this May and I had dual degrees in theater and business so I knew that I was really interested in not only learning, I'm a director, and I knew I was not only interested in learning about the artistic side of what it means to work in a theater, but also the business side. So um, artistic direction apprentices really appealed to me specifically. And uh, two days after graduating, I drove to Chicago, and I interned at Victory Gardens Theater in casting and producing, which I was also very interested in, and it, it was a wonderful experience. And and I had applied to a couple places. It's harder to find artistic direction apprentices or fellowships than you'd think, so there weren't, there weren't that many, but um, I applied to a couple and I grew up in Santa Cruz. And I also am a Sam Shepard fan, so there was a lot of things about magic that really appealed to me and it just worked out really nicely. Great, so some of you have talked about it and you talked about um, what you were doing prior to your internship, fellowship, apprenticeship. But I'm curious as to why did you why did you say my next step needs to be an apprenticeship, fellowship, or internship, and why did you decide to pursue a career in the arts? Some people do it more as a hobby. A lot of people don't do it as a career in the arts. Um, so some of you touched on it, but if you want to elaborate, feel free. But yeah, why an internship, fellowship, apprenticeship as your next step, and why pursue a career in the arts? So one... I guess the reason why I picked a career in the arts was because I was probably about 18 years old and I was like, okay, you're coming up on going to college. What are you gonna do? And I, I had the fortune of going to a performing arts high school. So I had been doing theater from the age of 14 to the age of 18. And I was like, you're gonna keep doing this and you're gonna make a career at it and you're gonna, you're gonna want it. So then that carried into college. And as, my, as I shifted from being I started out as an actor and as a shift from being an actor to being a director, I had the same similar thought of, okay, I want to go into the business of theater because I can still do my art, I can still direct, and I can also, you know, work on the admin side. So that came into, okay, what administrative internships can I find? And internship felt like the next logical step because it's really hard not that it can't be done, but it's really hard to move to a city and kind of freelance your own work. And if you're going to do that, you have to be really, really into just doing that, into, okay, I'm going to produce my own work and I'm going to knock on doors, which is great. And I that was definitely my option B. But option A was totally, let me get an internship, let me find something that is going to creatively drive me for, my internship is 10 months, for 10 months, and give me all the connections and give me all of the opportunities to talk to people and meet people in this area so that I can freelance the next year and do my art and stuff like that. So that was why I picked an internship next after college. So before saying specifically why I decided to go into a like fellowship internship, um, specifically for the arts, before doing anything in theater, performing arts has always, has always been a really big part of my life um, and my extracurriculars growing up. Um, and during my last year of college, I was actually working with a youth program through the Filipino Migrant Center down in Long Beach. And I was helping them produce this showcase called Sama Sama. Sama Sama in Tagalog means together. Um, and what they were doing was creating a show through, with hip hop music, dance, theater skits, um, and all these different components of performance art to talk about social issues that were important to them in their community, being in a very working class neighborhood of Long Beach. Um, and they were talking about things like violence, they were talking about things um, like gun accessibility to youth and gangs and 
there was a lot of really heavy stuff that they were talking about and writing about and singing about that they were conveying with their community members because they invited people from the city, they invited people from their schools, they invited their peers. Um, and I love that any form of performance art can bring that out of people. One thing that I really love about theater is that it brings out empathy when you're doing these activities. You're able to empathize and if you sit and watch these pieces, it's something that you can convey to a large group of people and you, you can feel that with with an audience and with your, with your, with your fellow performers and actors. Um, so I knew that after graduating and doing community organizing of that type, I wanted to continue, to, to continue doing something that was very physical, that was through performance. Um, and so when I graduated and after having that experience working on that showcase, I was like, okay, I'm shopping around, I'm looking at all these different fellowships and internships, um, and especially with education, you're looking at things like CalTeach and Teach for America. Um, but I know that I wanted to do something that was more specific, and I also wasn't sure if I wanted to go straight into getting a teaching credential. So when I heard about this program, I was like, oh, you know what? I have a really wide skill set, and I want to hone in on something and see how my skill set can be contributed to something else. Um, and while I'm really confident in the skills that I have, I know that I can gain more, and I can also learn from different fields. So fellowships and internships are a really great opportunity, opportunity to know your value, know what you can bring. Um, but also recognize that all of that can be expanded, especially as a recent grad. You can expand on the skills that you have and make them even better. Um, and you have things to contribute to wherever it is that you're going, whatever the fellowship or internship is. Right, so there's this saying in the theater that like, if you can imagine yourself doing anything else, do that other thing. Um, <laughs> and I actually, so I heard that from a very like, early age and I also I just never really believed in it um, because for me it's always been uh, like I, I feel like I could be happy doing other things you know and I um, you know after I graduated college I sort of you know I, I always was the type of person to like keep my options open but I think what is hard about that is like when you always are keeping your options open, sometimes you close like all of your options um, just a little bit. Uh, and so I felt like, you know, I had done a lot of directing in college, um, like some of the other people up here, you know, directing is a passion of mine. And I just thought, you know, it, maybe this isn't the right path, but I really want to put my full force into it and see if it is. Um, and so that's, uh, that's what has really brought me here, in, and and also what, what has brought me to the fellowship really is like having um, a place where it's a little bit safe, um, and you like you can feel safe in this organization, but you can also, uh, you know, there's opportunities to assist and direct, there's opportunities to direct there potentially. Um, we have this, at ACT, there's this thing called Sky Festival, which, um, what is, awesome about ACT is that it's also a school, right? It also has a three-year MFA program. And so there are tons of, you know, young actors who are going to be professionals. And I've gotten to know those people. I've gotten to direct some of them um, in the, the Sky Festival uh, that they do for about three weeks um, during January. So there are tons of opportunities, I feel like, within all of these theater organizations um, to really pursue your passions, but also, like, in a safe environment, right? So you have a, um, you know, you've got a nine to five-ish job um, that you can feel safe in, but then also pursue your, your other stuff. Um, so that's what I felt like, and I'm sort of just, you know, I don't know if it's gonna be, I don't know exactly what's next, I know we're, we're gonna get to that, but mm -hmm. um, but I think, I think you know, f going full force in one direction and then seeing if it works out or not is a, is a good idea. Um, yeah, I think college is such a wonderful time theater majors because you have this this safe environment where you're encouraged to make art you're constantly learning about all these different types of art forms encouraged to ex experiment with them and you're also surrounded by people who are there and they're so eager to teach you and, and help you develop as an artist and I know and I know you mentioned a mentor and and, and I had a couple really wonderful mentors that that I learned from and, and they were there through the process with me and then you face graduation and there's this terrifying idea that I may not be able to direct again for, you know, the set period of time for who knows how long. And of course that's not the case with everyone. 
and who knows what would have happened, but I reached the end of my college experience and I decided that I wasn't done learning in this setting. And of course, if you go out without something like this, you'll continue to learn. But I wasn't done learning from a mentor in, in this kind of environment and I definitely wasn't ready for grad school. I wanted, they want you to have experience, I wanted more experience. So I thought that an apprenticeship is, is the perfect opportunity to not only get a kind of sneak peek into the professional world before I try to dive in independently, but also to just continue my education in and you know, they say that you get to a point with the arts where you kind of have to stop watching and start doing, and I'm sure that is true. But for me, at this point in my life, I decided that by, and you do participate, but you're, it's a lot about watching. You know, people who have, who have given their blood, sweat, and tears to be where they are now, and I find that invaluable. So I decided that that's what I wanted to dedicate my year to, is just continue to learn from these people. Um, so, for me, like, pursuing a creative career was never, like, not an option. Like, it's the only thing I've ever wanted to do. Um, and I went to such a specific college that I really can't do anything else at this point. Um, so, like, fingers crossed this works out. Um, so, when I was done with college, I had been taking so many classes just about scenic design, and I had been working in the prep shop, and I knew, like I said, that I kind of wanted to do either or, but I wasn't sure which, but I wasn't confident enough in my skills with construction or any of the like um, stuff that goes into working over hire as a props person to want to apply to a, like an over hire position, turn up the first day on the shop and be like grossly underqualified. Um, and I like was talking to my boss about it in college and she said that like fellowships and apprenticeships would give me a good sort of learning within a safety net where I would still be like trusted to do stuff but I would have um, more of a mentorship or a like uh, I would be able to check in more often about like is this the right thing to do and um, have like be a part of an organization but not um, not as seriously I guess um, and also the like I grew up in Boston and I went to school in Chicago um, and the opportunity to just sort of be able to move to a city like I applied mostly to the East Coast in cities I had never been to before um, and then here and knowing that I would have like a place to live and like sort of a built-in social structure um, was really comforting. Thank you, Mara. All right, so now you all have made the decisions. I'm gonna apply for a fellowship, apprenticeship, internship. Tell us about what the application process was like, as well as the interview process. And because we have, we're featuring a lot of different individuals from different companies and institutions, tell us about what, what that may have been different from the other opportunities that you were applying for. Um, and also, what tools did you need to have when applying? Um, for example, I'm the education fellow at. Berkeley Rep, but when I was applying um, in my interview process, I had to talk about a lesson plan that I would do for the upcoming season. So talk a little bit about those type of things. Um, so for specifically for MTC, we had to send in the cover letter and resume as usual. Um, and what was unique about the interview process was I, I'm originally from the East Coast as well, so I was not here. So I had to do mine over the phone, uh, which was fine. But what was really great about interviewing with Jason, my boss, was he, so he called me, and it was a regular interview, but his questions, I think my favorite question he asked me was, you have you know, an unlimited amount of resources, you have to produce one playwright. Why would you produce this playwright? And there was like this weird long silence, because I was like, oh God, what, what, am, what am I, what's my answer gonna be? But it was, it was good because it felt like he was asking me questions that were m about me as an artist, not like stereotypical internee questions or like, where do you see yourself in five years? Which is a great question, but it was nice to have a question that was about my art and like why I would pick a specific playwright and things like that, especially because MTC is, we do a lot of new American plays. 
So it was cool to kind of be like, what playwright would you bring into this company if you could? Uh, so that was really cool. And I think, yeah, you just, you can endlessly and endlessly prep the questions that you're gonna get asked at interviews. But my biggest advice on that is just show yourself. Seriously, just be yourself. That was like my whole thing with interviews. Every interview, uh, the few interviews I did, I just made sure that they knew who I was as an artist and who I was as a person because most of the companies, and I'm sure everyone can speak on this, care about the people that they're getting as a person. They want to know what you're like as an artist, what you, you know, what you do for fun, what movies you like. Like it, it's easy to include little tidbits of that in your cover letter. So yeah, just just show yourself. Be be true to yourself. I kind of went on weird random brand. No, yeah, I think that's really important um, because so my fellowship, the community producing fellowship, did not exist before I applied. Um, so I actually applied to both the artistic fellowship and the education fellowship. Um, and I would say, you know, the reason why this came about was because they liked me as a person, um, and they saw that my skills were in both art artistic um, uh, stuff and then also the education um, piece of it as well, and I think that they were also in a point in their organizational structure where they wanted someone who could do both and could be sort of a liaison um, and could help with producing community engagement events, could also assist and direct, could um, also teach. And so it was a perfect mix where I feel like, and this is sort of a pilot program, right? So like I'm piloting the community producing fellowship. Um, but for me, you know, that was really important, was to show myself, to, was to know what I was passionate about, was to know like what my skills were and be really clear about those. Um, I think we also, as the edu in the education specific, uh, in the education department specifically, had to like put forth a lesson plan as well, um, just like a little tidbit. But it was really important for me to to know who I was and to show that so that they could like who I was and then be like, oh well this may be a good fit for her. And even if we don't have it, like maybe we can make it, which is pretty cool. Um, yeah. Cool, thanks. So, looking, so looking, looking at different applications and like shopping around for different opportunities to learn about students, which is mainly what I was doing, I wasn't just straight up looking for applications. Um, and that wasn't my process. It was, where are there people in San Francisco in education that I want to learn from, and how can I get in contact with them, and how can I talk to them about what, about what they did to get where they are? Um, when I found my application for ACT, it was the day that it was due, <laughs> and I didn't know that they had a fellowship. Um, and it was really funny, because I was just meeting with um, it's our associate director of uh, education and community programs, correct? What? That's Jasmine's title, associate director. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was meeting with her because she was a friend of a friend, and I wanted to talk to her about her community organizing work and her and her work with education within the theater, um, because again, my main thing is learning about youth from San Francisco. Like, if I'm going to go into public public education administration, then. I need to know the kids that I'm working for because I'm not going to put students' like lives and experiences in my hands if I don't know what they're what they're going through and what that education system is going through. So I wanted to talk to her about that because she'd been in education for a really long time and I'd been talking to other people about their experiences in education, which I think is really key when you're shopping for like what you want to do and you're applying for all these different things. Is also talk to the people that have been in those positions and then you'll find the applications and then they'll open doors for you because you're networking through community building and it's not just your personal benefit. Like, hey, what applications do you have for me? It's how did you get where you are and how can I learn from you? And then also maybe what, what tools do you have for me? What opportunities do you have for me? So like that was my process in looking for the application. I filled it out that night and luckily I've had almost a decade within peer education and, and teaching um, that I came up with a lesson plan that night and wrote my cover letter and um, a good tool or a good tip to have is know who your audience is, but again, also know who you are. Because you can also frame everything that you value, everything that you're passionate about, and also say that in a way that might speak to whomever you're applying for or applying to. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I 
applied to a lot of different places, um, but the like thing that started me on the like apprenticeship route was um, my boss told me about an opportunity in Greensboro, and I was like, I'll apply, but I don't want to go to the South. So I went on to the um, SPAM, the Society of Props Masters Artisans, uh, some acronym, but it's SPAM, um, <laughs> website, and they have like an Excel sheet that just has like every single props master in the country put up their own theater, and like if they have an education opportunity, or like, a, like an internship or an apprenticeship, um, if it's paid, if they have housing. So I just went through the spreadsheet and was like, oh, like, I'd go to Philadelphia, and I like sent in my application to Walnut Street. Um, and then after like a whole process of that and sort of during the interview uh, process, writing everything down and like sort of getting better at every interview as I went along and like realizing the sort of questions that I wanted to ask about the way that the shop worked, if we had to work run crew and stuff. Um, I sort of thought that I was going to go to one theater and then my boss, like, as I was leaving on a Friday night, was like, oh, Berkeley Rep said that they're still looking for someone. And I was like, ah, oh, I wasn't even considering California. And I sent in my application that Saturday. I got an interview on Wednesday and I think I got it the next Friday. Um, so it was a really fast turnaround because I think I applied really late. Um, and it just felt really right. Um, it, I was also really lucky because my school had a pro, like a class that you're required to take the last quarter of your, or the second quarter of your senior year that was like making resumes, learning how to do cover letters, and making a website specifically for designers. And so I had all of my application material kind of already in, a, like in a pack that I could send out to people. Um, and in my interview, I like sent in. I think the Berkeley rep requires you to like make a separate portfolio in a like PowerPoint, but I also sent my website and in the interview, like the props master here was going through my website and like asking me about all the separate projects and the processes I took and like the classic interview questions like when's the time that you like struggled or failed and how did you fix that problem? Um, so it was, I think it was pretty standard like interview uh, process for artistic jobs. I, of course, can't speak for everyone, but I, I think the idea of a cover letter for an artist is kind of horrifying. <laughs> um, it's just like you have a, a page or less to put your artistic soul on the paper <laughs> in a way that people will be able to understand and relate to. And that was, it was actually a real hang up for me. Um, and, and I really enjoy writing too, so I was just staring at this paper and, and I had a, my mentor told me to, to pick something in a work that I had done that makes me proud, that brings me joy, that I think not sums me up as an artist, because that's impossible, but something that I feel really speaks to myself as an artist, and put that down and use that as a point to expand. And I found that, I found that personally really helpful. And I also found that that, that was a way that I was able to be truthful about myself, and it, it actually wasn't a very conventional cover letter. You know, you can look up the way cover letters should go, and that's extremely useful, but I kind of deviated from that, and I found that I attracted places, uh, very specific places that that could relate to my cover letter. And you know, and maybe it wasn't the cover letter for everyone, but I found that to work for myself. And my roommate my, and my best friend was also a director, so he had a list, I had a list, and we <laughs> and we worked off each other. And I believe uh, magic, I believe, required a writing sample, a cover letter, and a resume. And then uh, when you hear back, when I heard back from them, they gave me a list of probably like 15 questions and the first play of their season. They said, read this, answer these questions, um, as well as sending me another play and, and giving me a prompt and having me write uh, a response to it. And it was pretty nerve wracking. <laughs> um, but honestly, once the interview started, it was such a joy to talk to people love theater as much as I do, and to really be able to discuss a play like this in depth, and it was a beautiful play and, a, and an interesting one, and, and it felt like they were, almost like they were trusting me with something, and, and it was, the, the conversation was easy and fun, and they, and I really enjoyed it.
enjoyed the whole process, honestly. Thank you, Karina. You actually brought up a great point about when you're doing cover letters and you're as an artist, what do we put in there to talk about our traje trajectory as an artist, but also what we've done thus far. And so just hearing from about two of you, I'm just curious, if for our applicants out there who are about to look over those resumes, look over those cover letters, what would be your tips to you know getting their resumes and cover letters seen? Um, yeah, and if I care about from two or three of you, and I know we have multiple disciplines here, so if one person from each discipline could speak, that'd be great. I just have something really quick. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned how important it is that they know who you are, but I, I think it's also equally important that you know who they are. Mm -hmm. So making, yeah. for interviews too, so making sure you've done the research on who the artistic director is, the plays they're doing that season, and showing in your material that you have done that work, I think is very important. Yeah, totally. To go off of that, because that's an excellent point, you definitely need to know the theaters you're sending these to. You can have a structure to your cover letter. It's very easy. It's not necessarily writing a new cover letter every single time, but it's finding the one unique thing one or two unique things about the company that you really like. So like with MTC, we do mostly new American plays, so I had to kind of talk about that in my cover letter. And for resumes, just keep your structure very easy to read. Think about it in the sense of when you go into, if, you're, if you are an actor or if you're a director, when you go, when someone comes into your audition room or you go into an audition room, that's, they're flipping it to look at it very quickly. If there's something on it that catches their eye or the structure is really simple to read, that's gonna get you, so many people are gonna compliment you on that because that's just such a big deal that it shows that you have structure, it shows that you know, okay, here's a list of the things I've done, here's the subsections of each thing. Just keep it super simple, don't get overly complicated with your resume unless you're, I can't speak on designers, but I know designers it's a different thing, but yeah. The simpler, the better, and I would agree. Know who the know the companies you're applying for, because they'll be able to sniff out which ones are like, okay, this is a cover letter they sent to everyone. It shows that you care. So that's what I would say. Um, for design cover letters and resumes, uh, do a really quick Google. Um, like most designers have their resume on their website, and you can just copy their format. Um, because it's it's kind of funny and some people do different things depending on if they're more design or more technical. Um, but for design and production, it's sort of your portfolio, your resume, and your cover letter together are showing what you're doing. Um, and in the like skills section on my resume, I have stuff that isn't demonstrated in my portfolio at all, but I definitely can do it, like lays, because um, I just don't have pictures of the stuff that I've turned. Um, but making sure that they know, like just having that is like nice in it, or like upholstery, like writing it down even though I have upholstery like stuff in my resume, making sure that it's like driving the point home of everything that I can do. Um, and then the cover letter is more of where your personality should, comes out or like being able to work on a team is really important when you're working backstage and no one wants to hire someone who they think is going to like like they aren't going to get along with personally. Um, so just like, uh, yeah, like letting them know that you have the skills but you're also like a good person to work with. For me being really honest about like who I was as an artist um, was really important in my cover letter and also like what makes me tick um, and what kind of theater I want to direct and make. Um, so for instance, like I was really upfront about being, um, you know, a queer woman of color, and that was really important. Um, I was also very upfront about, you know, I, what's really important to me about theater is that it's sort of this creative, collaborative imagination space in which we can all sort of rethink narratives that we've been potentially taught and really, um, uh, you know, it provides a lot of, uh, of an area to really grow and rethink our world. Um, and so, you know, I was in American Studies and Theater Studies double major, and um, and I was I'm always really interested in sort of the intersection between race and politics and theater and how we can um, 
rethink uh, a lot of uh, what we've been taught. And so I think putting that into my cover letter and like saying this is what makes me tick and this is the type of theater um, and the type of art that I want to make and this is why um, was really important to just being honest about who I was. Um, and I think, I think it also, it's important to know that like that might just sort of, as you said, um, uh, it might not be right for everyone, for every theater, right? That might turn some people off. And it's like, okay, you know? So we're both doing a sort of, um, uh, we're both, you know, um, doing, you know, limiting ourselves, you know, but we're both choosing to do that because I don't want to be at a theater that doesn't respect that and doesn't really want me to be there um, and want the art that I want to create, so. I echo what Nayela said entirely. <laughs> I was, was going to say basically that. So. <laughs> um, another part of these programs that is adding to our resume. And so we've roughly been depending in our apprenticeships, internships, fellowships for about six months. So thus far, what has been the most exciting experience you've had? And I'm going to throw this to Karina um, first, and then we're going to go down the line. So, Magic works on pretty much exclusively new plays, and that means that the playwright is in the room for at least part of the experience, So, and I had never experienced that. So, it's been our, our first show of the season, the Eva Trilogy, the playwright Barbara Hammond, who's the most wonderful person I've ever met, was there for pretty much the entire process. So, watching her and the director and artistic director of the company, Loretta Greco, work together was amazing, and I, I, have ne I had never experienced that. And, and seeing how a new play is built and how it changes throughout the process was pretty phenomenal. Um, the Berkeley Rep has like a really cool book ends of really exciting stuff happening in our season. Like I started halfway through uh, A2 Proud's build, and I like immediately got to start working on really like cool props and uh, like was just really pretty. Um, and now we're working on Angels of America, and I've like sort of been building up my, like, uh, I don't know, abilities in the shop. Uh, so I've been like entrusted with a couple projects that I've like uh, got to take from like workshopping with the actors um, and the special effects coordinator to just fully making them. Um, and that's been really exciting, and I really want to see them on stage. <laughs> I think the most exciting part for me so far in doing the education fellowship is seeing the process that students take when they begin a class and then when they end it and they do their exhibition or they do their final show. Because I'm, 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 like, I'm primarily working with kids that, unless they've repeated a program that we've done before, don't have any background in theater um, or acting or being in front of people, period. Probably don't like speaking in front of, in front of people at all. And I remember there was this one kid who was like, I'm not going up, I'm not reading lines, I'm not doing this activity, I don't like it, I don't want the attention, I'm gonna sit in the corner, do your thing. I was like, okay, <laughs> that's not gonna happen. <laughs> and you're going to enjoy it. So I'm gonna work with you all semester and see where that goes. And this kid was like the star of one of our programs at the end of the semester. He was like, you told me you didn't wanna do it and you just did it. And you had a standing ovation with you in your class. And seeing that process and seeing them grow and seeing them become proud of themselves because they're standing on a stage or they're standing in front of an audience and they're putting themselves out there and a lot of the stuff that we cover, it's like not, it's it's not the lightest stuff, like it's not always comedy. This past show, it, it, the show, a show that I did with downtown high school, they're, they talk about things like bullying. They took inspiration from um, sexual assault cases and they wrote about that. And they, they put that out on stage and they gave it to an audience and they were like, oh, I can do that. Like I can tell people how I feel about what's going on in the world and people, either they like it or they don't, but I get, I can do that. And simply, and like seeing a student be like, wow, this is something that I would wanna do. And even if I didn't, I had that opportunity. Um, it's, it's a really beautiful thing to see with young people. Um, so similar to Magic, we do a lot of new plays. So 
being able to hear playwrights' thoughts and talk with playwrights and stuff has been really, really cool and really eye-opening because I didn't work on a lot of new plays in college. So this is, it was like a new, sort of new field for me, which is awesome. But something really small that's really cool that we get to do is a lot of the, for our out-of-town artists, we'll do airport pickups and some of the interns will go and do them. So you're sitting in a car with an out-of-town artist, whether it's a designer or the directors or sometimes actors, and just getting to know them and really hearing their stories, seeing where you connect. And then they're in the building for the next, you know, three, four weeks, and the actors sometimes longer. So you're, you're becoming colleagues with these with these artists, and it's really great. So that's been the thing that's really been awesome for me is just the relationships with our other artists I'm cultivating just by getting to know them. As simple as talking to them about their coffee to then they'll ask me my opinion on art, and I'm like, oh my god, you're you know you're you work in New York and you want to talk to me about my opinions like that's really cool so stuff like that it's those cultivated relationships are really really awesome yeah I totally agree with that um it, there's been some really exciting stuff uh, I think I had mentioned this earlier but I was able to direct some of the MFAs um because I got to know them through another show that we worked on um and I got to work on Sunset Baby um by Dominique Morceau um, who is one of my favorite playwrights. And so that was really, really exciting. It was sort of a crazy two-week rehearsal process that was then we put together these um, performances in the studios. Um, that was definitely one of the most exciting things. And then also something that we just did in the education department, which was also um, uh, through the artistic department, which was uh, Every 28 Hours Black Arts Festival, which we just did two weeks ago. Um, and that was just one of the most exciting and brilliant and um, empowering moments of my fellowship so far because I was able to produce, help to produce that event. Um, and Leilani was also helping. Um, and, uh, you know, we, the Strand Theater had, there was never that sort of like takeover, right? With people of color in that space. You know, I think Leilani has talked about this. I, I find it really difficult because theater can be a very privileged space and, um, and can seem like it's only for a certain type of person. Um, and so I think like really seeing, um, seeing us tackle issues of police brutality in that space and um, uh, was really empowering and, and, uh, and felt like a, um, a moment, a pivotal moment in my fellowship. Cool, so you all talked about some amazing opportunities that you have had the uh, have been granted the opportunity to take, partake on, um, which is pretty cool, especially when you're talking about these apprenticeships, internships, and fellowships. So my last question for you all um, is really about all that you've learned thus far, and you have about maybe four to five more months to go. What are your next steps? What are you thinking about? What has the, it's kind of a two-part question. So one part of the question is, what are your next steps? And the other part of the question is, what has your fellowship, internship, apprenticeship taught you thus far about yourself as an artist, as an administrator, as a director, as a designer? And has that made you change what your next steps were going to be prior to coming into the fellowship or the internship or apprenticeship? Um, so anyone who would like to take that can. So my next steps are definitely continuing to be in places where I can build relationships with students. I think the biggest way to, to really get through to them and to really effectively teach them is to have a long-term relationship. One thing that's been hard is that for some of the residencies that I'm teaching right now is that it's once a week for like an hour. You can really only build so much of a meaningful relationship when you only see them that often. And then you tie in holidays and breaks for school, so then I see them even less than that within a semester. Um, so tying into what I've learned from, learned from my fellowship so far, as much as I love teaching these different programs, like I would want to do something that's long-term. Um, so I'm looking into other like long-term teaching opportunities to be more consistently with students. I have the opportunity this semester to be at Ida B. Wells High School and I'm with them every day. And that's, it's been a joy for me because I'm seeing them grow more consistently rather than just like once a week. Um, and 
another thing is that I'm also recognizing that I am not the most comfortable working in such a large organization. And I've just taken that away because it's, I've taken that away from this fellowship because there are so many different departments and there's so many different pockets in such a large organization that I don't feel entirely connected to everything that's happening. And I think that if I want to teach something or if I stand for certain values of an organization, it wants to know that through and through. And I can't do that with such a large organization. So I know, I know that I want to work somewhere smaller um, and somewhere more consistent um, as far as like my, my teaching opportunities. Um, so, what's really been exciting for me is, uh, lately I've been working a lot with our casting director on auditions for our up and coming season and just uh, sort of the life of a casting director, I've been helping her out as much as I can and that has unlocked something new for me. I'm like, oh, this is another thing that I actually, re like I knew I was interested in casting because that's part of being a director, but I was like, oh wow, this is something that could be the next step, is maybe you know, being an associate casting director somewhere, doing a casting fellowship or something like that, something within casting. So that's been really cool to learn. And yeah, I guess that's kind of led me to the next step is like, okay, what's gonna get me to the ultimate goal of being an artistic director? Because I'm not sure that that is necessarily gonna happen within the next five, 10 years, who knows? I know that's my end goal, what's the next thing I can learn, or what's the next thing I can do in admin to get to that point eventually. So that was that was pretty cool to learn, and yeah, I think that answers the question. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I got basically exactly what I wanted out of this, which was like honing my skills and feeling more confident, um, because my next step is uh, becoming like a freelance designer, and the reality of that is taking on a million different jobs at once and being able to say like, oh, I can also prop this show or also being able on like a slow time to be, to go in and work over hire for a show in the prop shop or um, do like props master at a smaller theater um, is going to be really good for me. Um, and also those skills are sort of transferable to any city that I choose to be in. Um, and I don't think I'm going to stay in the Bay, but because the Berkeley rep has so many like artists coming in, I think that I feel good about some of the connections that I've made and the people that I've met who know other people in other places. Um, yeah, I don't know what's next. Uh, <laughs> um, I think that, I think what has really helped about this um, uh, fellowship was that it has given me so many different, um, I've been able to do so many different things, right? I've been able to assist and direct. Um, I've been able to be a teaching artist. Um, I've been able to produce community engagement events. And I feel like, um, I feel like I love doing all of those different things. Um, I also, just sort of like Leilani said about, I, I've learned what it's like to be in an institution, in a, uh, in a large theater institution. Um, and it has, you know, it's pluses and minuses for sure. Um, and I think that it was very helpful for me to have sort of a safety net. Um, but it also has made me think really uh, deeply about what, um, what type of work I want to be creating and also who I want to be creating it with. Um, and so I think for me going into the future, I, uh, I, I really, um, I, my, my goals have become, you know, I want to, I want to get to know and really hone a community that, um, of like-minded artists who want to uh, tell the stories that I want to tell, um, and where we can grow and learn from that collaborative artistry, and I'm not sure right now if that's in a large theater institution, I think that it's probably not, uh, but but that doesn't mean that I don't want, you know, a job in a, in a large theater <laughs> institution. I think that it just means that I have to know that the end goal is to, like, have a smaller collaborative entity um, that I want to work with. And that's been really helpful, just, like, saying those words out loud and, like, creating that vision in my mind. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that answered the question. <laughs> I, I do not know 
what's next, but <laughs> kind of like everyone was saying, like the, this, this apprenticeship was such a wonderful opportunity for me to figure out at least what I want to do, what I don't want to do, and it's funny you mentioned casting. Um, I spent the summer casting, which I loved, and then was able to come into this apprenticeship being like, this is something I'm interested in, I'd like to do it as much as I can, and I, and I've been lucky to do a lot during my apprenticeship. So casting is definitely something I'm very interested in and in looking into. But I've also learned that I want to work in a small theater like this. Um, both Victory Gardens and Magic are small nonprofits, and it's just this wonderful opportunity to kind of get your hand in everything and to see how everything is running. There's no real secrets between departments. It's it's a really wonderful opportunity to, to look at all facets of, of how this, uh, how the art is made. So I will, I'm hoping to find a position in a small theater like this and, and go from there. So if you're watching, we're looking for jobs. So before we head out, um, we're going to see if there's anyone in the audience that has a question for any of the panelists or myself in regards to internships, apprenticeships, fellowships, career in the arts. Yes. So the question was, if you're a performer, um, you're really interested in, interested in production, do you think that an internship, apprenticeship, fellowship would be a useful opportunity for that, correct? Great. Yeah. Can you define what you mean by production? Like, do you mean backstage or like the actual like producing side? Like Yeah, so I think I would encourage you to totally apply for an internship. Just know exactly what in production you want to do because, yeah, it could mean I want to be, you know, a costume apprentice, which means you're going to be working in the costume shop all the time. You could also just be a production intern. Like at MTC, you can be the intern with our production manager who runs – who's the administrator for all of our backstage crews and things like that. And so you could do that if you wanted to be in more so of a like admin side to it. But yeah, I would say absolutely. There's no reason why you can't also be a performer and apply for a, you know, an internship backstage. That's actually a really great way to make some connections and meet people and get to know other actors because you'll be, you know, you might be dressing them. Uh, so it'll be, it's a good way to just get your foot in the door. So yeah, I would say absolutely there's no reason why you couldn't do that. Um, what I, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, you're good. I was just gonna say, ACT has like stage management fellows, which sort of do that. Are you still in college? Um, I'm a freshman in high school. You're a freshman in high school, wow. So what I would say is um, in high school and then also in college, um, you know, I would recommend like going, um, uh, doing production uh, work on uh, shows in high school and in college um, and gaining experience in that first and then applying for like a, a fellowship or something like that just to see if you like it and what exactly you like about it. Yeah. Um, these fellowships are such amazing opportunities but they are, they're a lot of work. They're big time commitments and it's so wonderful if that's what you want to do. But I, I will say I, I could imagine if it wasn't something I was passionate about applying for a position like this might not have been something I loved. And it is something I love because I am very passionate about this specific thing. Um, but I will agree that like in high school and college, doing it, learning as much as you can, doing as much as you can, and then gaining that knowledge of the thing that you want to give a lot of your time and heart to is important. Yeah, just try everything. Yeah. I, you know, I think all of us on this panel will tell you that because we all have done the sort of Let's try everything, and yeah, so just try everything, and you'll figure it out. Um, the, another, like, we're all in, like, year-long, 10-month fellowships, apprenticeships, I think, um, but when you get to college, a lot of summer stock theaters have, like, three-month-long programs, which are a really great way to figure out, like, to just sort of dip your foot and also work in really, like, high-quality theater, um, 
and or like kind of scrappy theater, which is also really fun. Um, and like everyone says, doing like the theater club in your high school is great. But there's also the teen program at the Berkeley Rep. Um, we just started or ended the Teen One X, uh, which was like a really cool way to like put on a whole production if you're uh, not getting what you need from your theater program at your high school. And Mara brings up a great point. Um, yes, Berkeley Rep, we have teen programming, teen council, make sure you check that out. But other theaters as well has a lot of teen education programs as well, which offer opportunities for teens to get involved, and not just as performers, but as designers, as directors, and across the boards. And even when you get to this level of a fellowship, internship, or apprenticeship, depending on what they call it, um, for the most part, they're all the same. They just have different titles depending. Just put that out there. Um, but um, when you get to this level, you still have the opportunity to go, huh, I did this and I don't like this. I'm the education fellow and while I do love education, I also attend the weekly marketing meetings with the marketing department. Um, the education fellow prior to me um, was more interested in artistic and is acting across the Bay Area. So you have countless opportunities, um, no matter what you decide to do, to do other things within the realm of art. Yes. So, if we don't have any more little questions from the audience, Great. We're going to wrap up and just very quickly go down the line, um, say your name again, your position at your company, and the company's name. And we'll begin with Karina. My name is Karina Fox. I'm an artistic direction apprentice at Magic Theater. Uh, I'm Mari Shihara Zinke. I'm the Props Fellow at the Berkeley Rep. I'm Leilani Germanuda. I'm the Education Fellow at the American Conservatory Theater. And I'm Alessandro McLaughlin. I'm the artist, one of the artistic direction interns at Marin Theater Company. I'm Nayila Harper Melvo, and I'm the community producing fellow at American Conservatory Theater. And I am Kylan Adams. I'm the education fellow at Berkeley Repertory Theater. And we want to thank you for tuning in to this Creative Careers panels on how to apply for a fellowship, internship, apprenticeship.